What are the steps to establishing a tax-free laser fund for your financial goals? In this educational episode, I'm going to address how do you open a laser fund? What's a laser fund? It's a max-funded indexed universal life insurance contract that is structured correctly and funded properly so you can use it for all kinds of financial goals. And people ask, how do I open one of these things? I'll explain next. So I'm Doug Andrew. I've been helping people optimize their financial assets and minimize taxes now for uh, nearly five decades, 48 and a half years as of the recording of this video episode. And so if you've watched very many of my educational videos, uh, my favorite financial vehicle or instrument uh, that allows people to accumulate their money totally income tax-free, and then uh, they can access money tax-free, uh, not just at retirement, but even long before retirement for their business or for their kids' college funding, whatever, any, any goal five years or longer down the road, uh, they can access money totally uh, income tax-free. And then during their golden years, they can turn on tax-free income and every million dollars they accumulate in a portfolio of laser funds can generate usually 80,000 to 100,000 a year. That would be eight to 10% payouts uh, for the rest of their life, usually without depleting principal, uh, totally tax-free. And when they ultimately die, anything that's left in there uh, transfers and blossoms and transfers tax-free. Now, when I say blossom, it just means it increases in value. If I died uh, tomorrow, I'm right now just about 70 years old, every million in a portfolio of laser funds would, would uh, blossom to about 2 million, about double that and transfer tax-free. There's nothing else in the Internal Revenue Code that does that. So my favorite vehicle is what I call the laser fund because laser is an acronym that stands for Liquid Asset Safely Earning Returns. So I want my money liquid so I can access it when I need it. And uh, two, I want it safe. Not only safe because of the institution, the, 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 the last domino that would fall if the total American economy collapsed. And even if the American dollar became worthless, uh, of course, I don't know if it would matter if you had your money at that point. You, you ought to be able to grow carrots in your backyard if it got that bad. But the last domino that would fall would be the multi-trillion dollar insurance industry, which is not only the backbone of America, but the backbone of the world, okay? This is where banks and credit unions put their money. They would be failing far uh, before the insurance industry would begin to uh, fail, okay? And so you would have a lot of forewarning to access your money, but if it gets that bad, it's like, where would you put your money? Some people say, well, gold and silver. Well, at the end of the day, you can't eat gold and silver either. So you've got to be able to convert it into uh, those things, food, clothing, shelter that you need to survive, okay? So I put my serious cash uh, into uh, vehicles that pass the liquidity test, the safety test, and then I want to earn a rate of return that will be equal to or greater than the inflation rate at any given time. And I've always been able to outpace the inflation rate by using max-funded indexed universal life. When inflation in 1980 hit 10%, I was earning 15.5%. Uh, in the year, uh, you know, from 2020 to 2021, when inflation actually hit about 15%, the real rate of inflation, uh, many clients were earning 25% and 61%. So that's why it's my favorite vehicle. Now, if you are going, golly, I've never heard of this before, be sure and search on this channel, subscribe. I have a lot of educational videos that talk about the merits of max-funded indexed universal life. And when it's structured correctly and funded properly, it qualifies to be called a laser fund. Uh, it passes the liquidity, safety, rate of return test with flying colors, and it's totally tax-free. And so when you do it correctly, you're grandfathered under the Internal Revenue Code under three sections to, con to uh, accumulate money tax-free and be able to turn on tax-free income or access it for any need and when you die, it blossoms and transfers tax-free. And so people then ask, well, how do I open one of these things? How do I set it up? Now, it's sort of interesting because they'll use a term like, how do I open a laser fund? 
Uh, because when you would go to a bank or a credit union, you would walk in and say, I need to open a checking account. Well, uh, we'll use that term, how do you open a laser fund, but it's really how do you establish one? How do you create one? How do you qualify for a laser fund? Okay, so in this episode, what you have to do, because this instrument requires that there is life insurance on an individual, and that individual has to qualify for the life insurance because life insurance is the vehicle that allows you to accumulate the money tax-free and then be able to access the money tax-free and when you die, it blossoms and transfers tax-free. Now, most people who would come to me for nearly five decades, they wanted to put their money into an instrument that would give them liquidity, safety, rates of return, and it was tax-free. Uh, they weren't really coming to me wanting or needing uh, life insurance per se. Uh, they didn't object to the life insurance benefits. I've never had anybody turn down a life insurance benefit if, if somebody died. Uh, we don't object to the benefits. If your employer offered you free life insurance this year as a company benefit, most people say, oh, thank you. How much can I get? Yeah, I'll take as much as I can get if it's not costing me anything. Well, nothing's free. But when you structure it the way I'm going to talk about here, uh, the insurance is coming along for the ride being paid for with a minuscule portion of money that would otherwise go out the window in unnecessary tax if you put your money into traditional accounts like IRAs or 401ks, where you would have to earn 15% to net 10 after tax when you start withdrawing the money. In a laser fund, I only have to earn 11 to net 10, and I've done that many, many a 10 and 20 year periods, okay? That 1% is not tax. It's the cost of the insurance that the IRS says has to be there in order for it to be tax-free. But if I earn seven, I can net six. If I earn uh, 10, I can net nine. If I earn 25 one year, I net 24 over the life of the contract because uh, that's not really a cost. It's a benefit, if you understand what I'm talking about. So uh, insurance is involved. So I'm gonna simplify this. There's basically uh, five parties uh, when you set up an insurance contract, okay? And an IUL is an insurance contract with an insurance company. So the insurance company is the insurer, okay? Now, if an insurance company is going to set up a life insurance policy, even if you're designing that policy the way I'm talking about, uh, where you're taking uh, the least amount of insurance that the IRS will let you get away with and you, you want to put in the most money or the most premium that the IRS allows so it turns into a tax-free cash cow, uh, you still need to qualify for the amount of insurance. So let's just use an example. Let's say I want to uh, reposition in the next five years uh, $500,000. I could set up a laser fund to accommodate $50,000. Five hundred bucks a month, uh, uh, five hundred thousand, five million. Let's just use five hundred thousand. So, if I want to sort of be grandfathered to be able to put in up to five hundred thousand, uh, the IRS said, "Well, if you want to have a tax-free access, uh, the fastest that you can put in that five hundred thousand would be about twenty percent a year." I'm just going to be very general here. Uh, at my age, I could put in about a hundred thousand a year. And if I put in 100,000 a year for five years, I now have my 500,000 in there and I've max funded it. I can't put any more in. If I did, the insurance company would be forced to refund it to me. Now, there's no limit to what that half a million can grow to. The half a million, based upon my actual average returns historically, 9.62%, will double every seven and a half years. A half a million would double to a million in seven and a half years, and then double to two million in another seven and a half, and then to four million, then eight million. Yeah, in 30 years, 500,000 can grow to 8 million, and we've had clients who have achieved that, totally tax-free. So when you're structuring a laser fund or a portfolio to do that, uh, you could buy a lot of life insurance for $500,000. That's not the objective. You want the least amount of insurance. And so, you know, if you're 60 years old, it might be uh, twice that. If, if you want to be able to put in 500000 and have it be tax-free as it grows and when you access the money, the amount of insurance required might be uh, a million. But as you put in that 500000 that qualifies as part of the million. And so the insurance company is only going to charge you for the 
for the net difference. And as that 500,000 doubles to a million, the, the actual, you're self-insuring. You can learn about this on this very channel. So the actual cost of the insurance, even as you get older, is going down. But coming back to qualifying, when you open one, you have to justify. It's called the reason and justification uh, for a million dollars of life insurance because the insurance company underwriter knows, well, you don't have to put in 500000 into this million dollar policy. You could put in 10000 bucks, and if you died, they're on the hook to pay out a million. Okay? And so uh, even though you intend on putting in 500 and uh, they're only on the hook for the, for the remaining 500,000, nonetheless, you don't have to. And so they have to make sure that you qualify for a million. What does that require? Well, the insured who, is, who has the insurance on them, the insured uh, has to prove that there is an insurable interest between them and a beneficiary that's named when you're actually underwriting the policy, when you're taking it out, when you're opening it. So let's say I was opening one and I was naming my wife as a beneficiary. I have to prove that if I died, my wife would suffer economically <laughs> by virtue of my death or my children or my trust or whatever. And so you have to prove when you open one that there is an insurable interest, uh, there's a reason and justification for a, uh, let's say, a million dollars of death benefit. And uh, because somebody's going to suffer economically by that amount if I happen to die sooner than later. And that's very easy to prove when, you're, when, when you've got a spouse, you've got children or what have you. Does that make sense? And so there is the insured and there's the beneficiary. Now, the owner of the IUL policy is usually the insured but it doesn't have to be. Uh, so when would you maybe own one and you're not the insured? Because sometimes uh, the, in, the, the owner can't qualify for the life insurance. Maybe they've had a heart attack in the last year. Uh, by the way, you'd be shocked how many people do qualify even if they've had a heart attack or episode or diabetes or what have you. So don't rule yourself out because even if you are insurable and you get rated, you can squeeze down the death benefit low so the cost of insurance doesn't cost you at age 60 or 70 any more than a 20-year-old athletic marathon running female. You can learn about that on this channel and also by reading a book I'm going to gift you here in a few minutes at the end of this episode, so stay with me. But if the, if the owner of the policy cannot qualify for the insurance, the owner can own an IUA policy on a surrogate like their spouse or their kids. So it's the owner of the IUA policy that gets all the tax-free growth and all the tax-free income. So you don't, have to, you don't have to be the insured to be the owner. There are many people that own them on their spouse, their kids. And so uh, think about this. You have the owner, you have the insured. They're normally the same, but they don't have to be. You have the premium payor. That's the one who's putting the money in. Well, I've had grandma and grandpa paying premiums into a policy on, on mom or dad and the, the kids are the beneficiaries, okay? Or a trust or whatever. And so you have the insurer, the insured, the owner, the beneficiary, and the premium payor. They can all be different parties, even though normally the one paying the premiums is the owner and is the insured. They don't have to be. Does that make sense? So how do you open one? You go to a licensed professional. You have to go through somebody who is licensed. If you went straight to an insurance company and said, I want an IUL, they would send you to somebody who has a license. And I would be a little bit worried because unfortunately, they may send you to somebody who does not understand how to structure them correctly and fund them properly. Just having an insurance license does not mean you know how to do it correctly. Believe me. And so you have to go through a licensed individual. You fill out an application. And you have to prove that uh, there's a reason and justification for the amount of insurance applied for. You can qualify for insurance based upon a factor of your income. When you're young, maybe 30 times your income. When you're older, maybe it's only eight or 12 times your income, or maybe it's one times your net worth. You have to qualify financially by guidelines, and you have to qualify health-wise. Once you get that taken care of with a specialist who knows how to do this, if you get approved, then you have the policy and then you can begin to fund it. You can minimum fund it. 
Uh, you could put in, you know, 5,000 and 10,000, or you can put in 100,000. They're very, very flexible. But the most in this example, if you took out one that would accommodate 500,000, would be maybe 100,000 per year. If you tried to put in more than that, uh, it would create a mech and it would not be tax free when you access it. So you want to go through a specialist who understands the parameters so that you're optimizing it and minimizing the taxes and also the costs and the fees. But it's actually pretty simple to open one, but sometimes they have to get your medical records from the doctor's offices that you've seen. And sometimes they take a month or more to send medical records because the underwriter at the insurance company is going to check out and make sure that you're uh, qualified from a health standpoint. Does that make sense? So uh, you talk to an IUL specialist. They will fill out an application, create illustrations. They will justify it by health and by your income and net worth. And then once you get approved, you're off and running and you can begin to fund it in accordance to your plans in compliance with IRS rules to accumulate your money tax-free, access your money tax-free, and when you die, it will blossom and transfer tax-free. It's an incredible tool. It's my favorite vehicle of all. So if you want to learn more about this, I want to gift you a copy of my most recent best-selling book called The Laser Fund. It's 300 pages, uh, jam-packed with information. 200 pages is on this white side. It's for the left brain learner. It has all the charts and graphs and explanations. If you're more of a right brain learner, you flip it over to this side. About 100 pages, 12 chapters with 62 actual client stories. And uh, you don't have to pay $20 on Amazon for this. I will gift you a copy. Here's how you claim your free copy. You go to laserfund.com. Click on the link below, L-A-S-E-R fund.com. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that and I'll fire out a hard copy to you. There's also options there if you would like to listen and learn, watch and learn. Uh, we teach uh, online webinars for your education. Uh, of course, there's this YouTube channel. I want you to subscribe to the channel. It's free. I post a, a new educational video almost on a daily basis. But this is about your brighter future. While you're in that website, you may want to set up a time to pick the brain of one of the top IUL specialists in America that we train to see how this may benefit you and how easy it is to open up a laser fund correctly. Mm -hmm.